This is a battery that I built from common household materials. And yes, that's a Game Boy being run off said batteries. But before I show you a retro gaming montage, let me show you the process of how I got here. It all started when I returned home from my New Year's vacation to find a little oopsie I had made. That's a pain. So I had a whole bag of potatoes on my hands and not wanting to just throw them out, I started to figure some ways how I could use them. And it did not take me long to figure that I could use them to make potato batteries. I also figured that instead of just lighting up some LEDs, I'd love to try to get some gaming device working. Just imagine the title, Real Gaming on Potatoes. Needs a little work, I know. Everybody knows how a potato battery works, right? You just take a bit of zinc, a bit of copper, and then you shank them into the potato, and voila, electricity. However, a long story involving miscalculations, broken multimeters, and general lack of resources. Short, try saying that fast, I was not able to game on potatoes. Yet. However, the week and a half of potato battery research was not in vain, for I also learned about other battery chemistries which didn't seem too difficult to make with the things I had on hand. First, I learned about zinc air batteries, theoretically only requiring zinc, steel, or any other metal really, and potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide? Who has potassium hydroxide just laying about? I'm no chemist, so I definitely don't. However, I do have sodium hydroxide. Drain cleaner. So I tested the chemistry out. And indeed, you just simply take a piece of zinc, some high surface area steel, like steel wool, and submerge them in a hydroxide solution. And you will get electricity. Public service announcement. Don't be like Birdbrain. Always wear appropriate personal protective equipment, such as chemical resistant gloves when working with strong alkali. The zinc air battery works through a multi step chemical reaction. First, the hydroxide ions in the electrode will attack the zinc anode and form zincate, releasing electrons in the process. The zincate, however, is not really that stable and wants to settle to an even lower energy state. So it does, forming zinc oxide and water. But as long as there are electrons flowing into the cathode and oxygen from the air available, then the water molecules get reduced back into hydroxide ions. While the batteries worked fine, producing about 1.1 to 1.2 volts, they kind of lacked in the instantaneous power side of things. So soon enough I figured that I would try using the leftover copper plates from earlier potato batteries as the cathode instead. And to my surprise... Oh sh**. That's not dropping much at all. That's what she said! <laughs> um... um... Very interesting. At first, I thought that the copper is just simply a lot better of a metal to use in a zinc air battery, but as it turns out, I had made a completely different kind of battery. A copper zinc alkaline battery, also called an Edison Lalonde cell, first made by Felix Lalonde and Georges Chaperon. Georges Chaperon. Georges Chaperon. And the cell was later improved upon by Thomas Edison, as well as many others. It's battery tech straight out of the late 1800s. These batteries were used to power things like railway signals, phonographs and electric fans. The copper zinc alkaline battery works through a reversible chemical reaction. If the battery is being discharged through use, then the zinc anode, similarly to the zinc air battery, will release electrons. Meanwhile, on the copper cathode, these electrons get used up to reduce any copper hydroxide or oxides back into copper. 
To charge this battery, a power source needs to overpower the movement of electrons and essentially run the reaction in reverse. Before anyone is going to be in the comments like Edison the land cell is a primary cell, it's not rechargeable, wah! Y yes yes the cell has a fairly limited number of recharge cycles due to electroplating happening within the cell but it's still rechargeable so it was a no-brainer for me to start experimenting with this battery chemistry instead I designed a fairly simple five-step process to make these cells. Step 1. Make electrodes. Step 2. Clean electrodes of greasy fingerprints. Step 3. Acquire separator. Step 4. Make copper zinc burrito. And step five, add electrolyte. It's got electrolytes. And then, to finish it all off, the cell needs to be charged. Are you tired of constantly buying new batteries for your electronics? Would you rather not have reliable batteries? Well, then you're looking for the all new Bird Brains Copper Zinc Alkaline Battery. It holds charge. It's caustic. 1.1 volts and a highly variable 1 to 3 hour charging time. Don't delay. Make one now. No. No. Don't make one. The capabilities of these cells are complete garbage. With around a measly 5 to 7 milliamp hours of capacity, they're not even close to being a viable replacement for button batteries. And they leak charge faster than you can take a leak. Regardless, I made a bunch of these cells. More than enough to theoretically run the Game Boy for about 10 minutes. I also 3D printed some containers for the cells, which went well. How did I manage to do that? I put the cells to charge and... I think one of the cells might have failed for some reason. I... <sighs> They just started failing one after another. I think I will put these three cells, the three packs of cells, in series and, and see if we can get the Game Boy working. Technically, it should work, even with just these 12 cells. I'm not that hopeful though. No. See, it, the voltage, if you, if you look on the background, the voltage does jump for just a moment. So it's trying, it's really trying. Now, at this point, I've put way more time into this project than I wanted to. So after I noticed that I am starting to fail this project as well, my brain just went... <laughs> yeah, I just said f*** it and supersized the cells. Alright, as far as I can tell, um, all of the cells are charged. So here goes a Hail Mary, really. So the voltage is 
perhaps a little bit high for the Game Boy. <laughs> I mean, anything below 5 volts should be fine. And you shut up. Plus, the voltage will go down incredibly quickly after load is applied. <gasps> it it's putting. It's 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 in it's in Bruh. a game. Oh no. So the game will require a bit too much. Let me get a game that supposedly takes less power. Probably the worst looking Super Mario Land's cartridge you've ever 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 seen. All right. Super Mario Land. I am actually playing on my own batteries. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Also, I'm sorry if, if the game, gaming experience is really bad here. I'm just... Whew, I'm actually ecstatic. Let me turn that contrast. Nah, that's fine. And there it goes. Wow. Wow. That counts, right? That has to count. <sighs> yep, three weeks, three weeks for 20 seconds of gaming. The project undertaken was calculated, but man, am I bad at math. What went wrong here? I'm not entirely sure, but the causes can be plenty. This is not pure zinc. It's not even a pure zinc coating. This is aluminium zinc coated steel. This is not copper, it's brass, I think. The drain cleaner quotes a 15 to 30% sodium hydroxide solution. That's a massive variance. And my charger setup is literally an old phone charger with some Soviet era of resistors. So, is that it? The next day, I went through a hardware store to get resources for a completely different project. And just from the corner of my eye, I noticed the unmistakable glisten of copper. Apparently, copper-coated scouring sponges are a thing that exists? What? What the fu- So my brain once again goes. <laughs> That's right, I combined the best design from the zinc air batteries earlier with the copper zinc alkaline chemistry. I put the jars of copper zinc soup to charge and then went to bed. I've charged these batteries overnight and the voltage certainly has gone up, so let's try playing, I guess. I have hooked up the batteries um, in series. So they've gone up to 4.72 volts, uh, which should be plenty enough. Power goes to this one, ground to this one. It works. All right, we're playing Pokemon.
So it worked, and it worked great! In the end, the total playable runtime was an hour and a half. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. Not to mention, I don't think the batteries were fully charged. So in the end, all it took was some empty glass jars, pieces of zinc-plated steel, copper-plated scouring sponges, and some drain cleaner. You know, sometimes when life gives you lemons, um, potatoes, you end up wasting three weeks of your life solving a self-imposed problem, only to arrive at the dumb simple solution at the end. No? It's just me? I guess they don't call me bird brain for nothing. Alright, that's it for today. Will I manage to game on potatoes next? I don't know. Maybe subscribe to find out. Leave your thoughts and suggestions down in the comments. And please, if you like this video, do share it with your like-minded friends. Thanks. Bye.